In recent philosophical and scientific discussions, a compelling theory has emerged, suggesting that our reality might not be as concrete as we believe. Termed the simulation hypothesis, it posits that existence as we perceive it could be an advanced digital construct, overseen by a higher intelligence. This proposition isn't merely a product of modern technology, but echoes ancient philosophical inquiries into the nature of reality. It forces a reconsideration of existence, urging a deeper exploration into what constitutes the fabric of our perceived universe and our place within it. Long before the digital age conceptualized the notion of a simulated universe, ancient philosophical traditions were already probing the boundaries between reality and illusion. Eastern and Western philosophies, through varied lenses, have delved into the concept that what we perceive as reality might not be the ultimate truth. In Eastern thought, particularly within Hinduism and Buddhism, the idea of Maya and Sunyata present the world as an elaborate illusion, a cosmic play that masks the true, unchanging reality. Hindu philosophy articulates Maya as the divine magic that creates the world of phenomena, suggesting that the material world which is subject to change and decay, cannot be the ultimate reality. Buddhism, with its emphasis on emptiness, teaches that phenomena lack inherent existence, pointing towards the illusory nature of the material world and its perceptions. Western philosophical thought parallels these ideas through allegories and skepticism about the known world. Plato's allegory of the cave, for instance, offers a vivid depiction of humans confined to a shadowy existence, mistaking shadows for reality, unaware of the true form of things beyond their cave. This allegory underscores the concept that our perceived reality may be but a shadow of the true, higher reality that exists beyond our immediate sensory experiences. A poignant reflection from Plato that resonates with the discussion on simulation and reality is we can easily forgive a child who is afraid of the dark. The real tragedy of life is when men are afraid of the light. A quote that encapsulates the journey from illusion to enlightenment, emphasizing the courage needed to question and transcend ignorance's shadows. Both Eastern and Western traditions, therefore, offer profound insights into the nature of reality, suggesting that the physical world we navigate is merely a surface level of existence. The quest for understanding, for piercing through the veil of Maya, or stepping out of the cave, is a call to explore beyond the sensory and the mundane, to question the foundations of our perceived reality. These ancient philosophies provide a rich foundation for contemplating the possibility of a simulated existence and guide the search for an underlying, unchanging truth. A quest that remains as relevant today as it was in the times of Plato and the sages of the Upanishads. The quest for spiritual awakening has often been intertwined with the exploration of reality's nature. Although the simulation hypothesis is technologically framed, it echoes ancient concerns about world authenticity. René Descartes once said, If you would be a real seeker after truth, it is necessary that at least once in your life you doubt, as far as possible, all things. By doubting everything that could possibly be doubted, Descartes arrived at a single indubitable truth, cogito ergo sum, I think therefore I am. In a potentially simulated existence, the foundational insight that the thinking self exists is a beacon for navigating uncertain waters. It suggests that while the external world and our perceptions of it might be illusions, the consciousness that perceives is real. Descartes' exploration paves the way for a deeper inquiry into the nature of consciousness and its place within or beyond a simulated reality. If our reality is indeed a construct, as the simulation hypothesis posits, then understanding the nature of the consciousness, experiencing this reality, becomes paramount. An effort to understand mirrors the spiritual journey where the pursuit of truth leads inward to the essence of self, independent of external illusions. 
The Cartesian method of systematic doubt does not merely dismantle the assumed reality of the physical world. It also sets the stage for a profound realization that the essence of self, the I that thinks and perceives, might hold the key to transcending the boundaries of the simulation. This inward journey, inspired by Cartesian doubt, resonates with the essence of spiritual awakening in the Western tradition. It suggests that liberation from the illusions of the world, including the potential illusion of a simulated existence, lies not in the external verification of reality, but in the recognition of the consciousness that experiences reality. A recognition such as this is consistent with the ancient philosophical search for a timeless truth in the midst of the world's transient phenomena. By turning the focus inward, the seeker encounters the only aspect of existence that remains constant, the self-aware consciousness. In this light, the simulation hypothesis serves not as a modern conundrum, but as a contemporary expression of a timeless spiritual challenge. To discover the essence of being that transcends the fleeting illusions of reality. The journey toward uncovering base reality amidst the bewildering possibility that our existence is a simulated construct harks back to an age-old philosophical endeavor, the search for an immutable eternal truth that underpins the ever-changing phenomena of the world. This quest, invigorated by the simulation hypothesis, challenges us to redefine our understanding of reality and to discern the foundational bedrock upon which all existence might be grounded. Ancient wisdom and modern contemplations converge on the premise that if something possesses a beginning and an end, it cannot constitute the ultimate reality. Such transience points to a deeper, unchanging reality that persists beyond the temporal bounds of birth and decay. The question then becomes, what aspect of our experience remains constant, unaltered by the vicissitudes of life and untouched by the layers of simulation? In grappling with this question, the notion of consciousness as a candidate for base reality emerges with compelling force. Despite fluctuations in awareness and states of consciousness, there exists a continuous sense of I am, a fundamental awareness of existence that underlies every experience. This persistent self-awareness suggests a dimension of reality that is not contingent upon the physical or simulated constructs, but is intrinsic to the very fabric of existence. So in order to reach base reality, one must go beyond identification with material or simulated layers of existence to introspection. By peeling away the layers of perceived reality, whether they be physical phenomena, mental constructs, or simulated environments, the seeker is drawn into a deeper exploration of what it means to exist. As a result of this journey, we discover that the essence of reality may not lie in the external world of changing forms and phenomena, but in the unchanging, eternal nature of consciousness itself. Emerging from the quest for base reality, self-inquiry stands out as a profound and direct path to transcendence. It beckons the individual to delve into the heart of their own existence, questioning the very nature of the I that perceives, thinks and exists within or perhaps beyond the simulated veneer of reality. Rooted in ancient philosophical traditions, yet strikingly relevant in the context of modern discussions on simulation, this practice invites a radical introspection that can dismantle the illusions we often mistake for our true selves. Engaging in self-inquiry, one embarks on a journey to peel back the layers of identity, belief and perception, aiming to uncover the unadulterated essence of consciousness that lies beneath. As the inward gaze deepens, a transformative realization unfolds. The sense of individual existence, the I am, often thought to anchor us to our reality, may itself be a construct, an illusion as transient as the simulated world we seek to transcend. Yet paradoxically, within this realization lies the key to liberation. By steadfastly questioning who am I, beyond the confines of body, 
mind, and the presumed simulation, a shift occurs. The seeker begins to touch upon a realm of understanding where the distinction between the simulator and the simulated blurs. Here, in the silent acknowledgement of consciousness that precedes form and phenomenon, one finds a profound freedom. This liberation does not hinge on escaping the simulation in a literal sense, but on transcending the limitations it imposes on awareness. In this space of boundless consciousness, the simulation, with all its complexity and intrigue, appears as but one of myriad expressions of the underlying reality. Ultimately, the realization that emerges is that the essence of our being is not confined by the bounds of a simulated reality. An endless openness, the nothingness from and to which all existence springs, is the ultimate ground of all existence. This profound insight reveals that liberation lies not in deciphering the nature of the simulation, but in recognizing and embodying the boundless nature of the self. In order to elude the simulation, the ancient secret is to realize that the self transcends all constructs and forms, including simulated reality itself. In synthesizing these insights, it becomes evident that the path to freedom from the simulation is not through technological means or intellectual understanding alone, but through the timeless journey of spiritual awakening. The ancient practices and philosophies, from the meditative inquiries of the East to the allegorical explorations of the West, offer the keys to unlocking a deeper understanding of reality, encouraging a re-evaluation of existence and our place within it. <laughs>